coming up on this edition of ATV News. I got it, I got it. This woman was burned when her home exploded. We'll tell you why. Does this gray scene make you feel sad? We'll show you how you can survive the cold before spring. It's kind of like a gas station on a road trip for birds. We'll show you where you can see these birds stopping to refuel on their way out of town. It's one week before spring officially starts. I'll show you how long the sunshine will last and when to expect the next showers. In sports, I'll give you the details on the Aggies' first round NCAA tournament matchup and which player made first team all conference. All that and more, this is ATV News. The woman on this stretcher asking for her family to be found is one of two people injured, one dead and 11 dogs also dead after a house exploded in Cash Junction. Welcome to this edition of ATV News, I'm Paige Johnson. And I'm Burl Johansson. The Cache County Sheriff's Office released a statement saying two people are recovering from burns in McKay D and Cache Valley Hospitals after a propane leak caused their house to explode. Cache County Sheriff's Office responded to a call about a, a house explosion on Thursday. They say nine separate fire stations helped because of the nature of the fire. Lieutenant Mikkelshan Barchi says resident John Mullen died from the explosion, while Karen and Joshua Mullen have long recoveries ahead from their burns. They also say the family are professional dog breeders. They say at the time of the explosion, 16 dogs were in the house. Five have been recovered, and of those five, three are in critical condition, while two are in good condition. In this body cam footage, you can see the firefighters working to put the fire out. This is when they found Karen Mullen. Here she is being pulled from the, the rubble and laid out on a stretcher. Deputies responded to several collapsed structures over the last week. About 30 people evacuated when this roof collapsed at Wellsville Recovery. That same day, deputies responded to a collapsing roof in Hiram. Several porches have also collapsed under the snow's weight. All this snow has some residents taking action before their roof is the next to fall. He's uh, taking the snow off the roofs because of the weight and um, to make sure that it doesn't collapse. The sheriff's office says that to call a building inspector immediately if you are worried about the safety of your building. After coming back from spring break, students saw the Institute of Religion for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints getting torn down. An excavator knocks one of the walls of the Institute building down. The building was originally built in March of 1929, making it 94 years old. Institute classes were moved to other buildings on campus and in churches around Logan. It's kind of sad because I know it's been here for forever, and but if they can make a better, new and improved one, I think that'd be really great. People aren't sure why the building is being torn down. Students think because of its age, it could be a health hazard or not up to code. We reached out to the Institute, but they did not get back to us. In case you missed it because you were on spring break, here are USU's main and statewide election results. Emily Smilin Itch is now your new Logan Vice President with 100% of the votes after she ran unopposed. Tate Bennett won Athletics and Campus Rec Executive Director with 57.57% of votes. Alex Garces is the Diversity and Organization Executive Director with 41.26%. And Avery Barton is now the Student, Exe Student Events Executive Director after she ran unopposed. For your statewide Vice Presidents, Myra Beecher is the Vice President for Eastern Campus, Rihanna James is the new Blanding VP, Sydney Smith won in Moab, and Kinsey Greenhall is VP in Southwest. In Tooele, Melissa Reedy won VP, Megan Saloga is the new Uena Basin VP, Janelle Ritchie won in the Wasatch, and the new Brigham City Campus VP is Emily Davies. Daylight savings is something that you have experienced every year because of the Uniform Time Act of 1966. However, a bill has been introduced twice in an attempt to get rid of that act. Changing our clocks every year for daylight savings isn't something everyone wants to continue. The Sunshine Protection Act, a bill to stop daylight savings, was reintroduced at the beginning of the month. 
Florida Senator Marco Rubio introduced the bill, saying the ri this ritual of changing time twice a year is stupid. Locking the clock has overwhelming bipartisan and popular support. I went around campus and asked students if they prefer to keep daylight savings or if they want to get rid of it. I'd say just have it all year long the same time and just make it easy. I would say that Utah should get rid of it. Keep daylight savings, although it's a little hard to adjust to. Like, it's nice for it to be light outside. I don't understand the point of it, so yeah, I, I just wish we didn't have it in general. So I wouldn't mind if they just got rid of it. You wouldn't have to worry about resetting all your different clocks and whatnot. Are you finding yourself feeling blue this winter? If so, you aren't alone. Claire Scott shows us why it may be the cold and clouds getting you down. The snow has piled up, coating mailboxes and covering parking lots. Cold temperatures and snowstorms continue to hit northern Utah, and USU students say they're not a fan. I am originally from Florida, and I'm used to 60-degree winters, so these are really cold. It was nice and snowy and gorgeous, and now it's just gone on way too long. Seasonal Affective Disorder, or SAD, is a type of depression that is triggered by a change in seasons. Studies found about 5% of American adults experience SAD. That is over 16.5 million people. It's a little bit more challenging when it gets really hot or when it's really cold to go outside and that can kind of that can lead to to um, to feelings of isolation. Psychologists say isolation during winter storms is dangerous because we need human connection. Anytime we start to decrease our, our social interactions, it wears and tears on our mental health. These people skating are enjoying the winter, and you can too. One of the best things we can do is start to interact with each other, make plans, um, put things on the calendar. Plants need sunlight to live. Though we probably won't wilt away like this one, Giles says humans are also affected by a lack of sunlight. Light therapy lamps like this one found at the USU library are a good way to get some sun, even during the dark winter months. Though Giles says getting outside is still important. The Scandinavian countries, they're also often rated as some of the happiest countries. They do things outside. They look for opportunities to enjoy the season rather than dreading it. Oh, yeah! If getting outside and connecting with others doesn't work, Rui says, get help. <laughs> Reach out for good professional mental health, which as students you have access to. Claire Scott, ATV News. And man, is it nice and warm today. I mean, I was getting on the bus to come on campus and the bus driver was playing Frozen's Olaf singing welcome or uh, summer excuse me and it really just kind of put me in a good mood with this warm weather you know I really wish it was summer but one thing I saw last week was the polar plunge in Hiram actually and that put a smile on a lot of people's faces I froze my booty off to, to see people take the polar plunge in Hiram Reservoir to raise money for the Special Olympics Three, two, one. jumper before they risked the icy water. Organizers say the water was about 20 degrees. Proceeds went to the Special Olympics Utah. We offer all of our services to our athletes for free. So um, the only way we're able to have our organization is by holding events like this. So it means the world to our athletes. They raise about $10,000 for the program, which will go towards practice fees, new jerseys and travel expenses. The Jazz Bear and a couple of the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City also made an appearance. As I was filming, I was told by the Real Housewives film crew that I was not allowed to film the housewives themselves. They delayed the plunge and were in the way of people trying to enjoy the event. A couple people from the crowd told us that they felt annoyed by their actions and that the event was overshadowed by their presence. USU PD has been using K-9 since 2020 to keep a nose out for on-campus threats. But how do these brave dogs prepare? Marcus Lamb visited the Spectrum to see how K-9 handlers and their dogs keep Cache County safe. This is Zoomer, a K-9 for the USU Police Department. Zoomer is a demolition dog and is training for locating bombs here in the Spectrum. Venues that we have up here hold 10,000 plus fans. So before any large gathering, a football game or a basketball game, that's when Zoomer is used to do what we call a sweep of those events. Trainers work their dogs hard by hiding scents where their nose is defined. He wants to work. When he's out of the truck, he knows his nose should be working and looking for explosives. Sergeant Scott and Deputy Ricks have a strong bond with their dogs. I spend more time with him than I do my family. He's at work with me all the time. 
about the only time we don't see each other is when I go on vacation somewhere. And what better way to strengthen the bond than toys? When he finds the odor that he's been trained to find, the next step is he sits and he's given his reward, which is a tennis ball. As long as he has that desire to go search, chase that tennis ball, we'll keep working him. Dogs like Zuma here keep their senses in tune and their noses up high. But these dogs do more than just search and find. When the time is right, these canines are ready to fight. Show your hands now, you're going to get bit. Dogs like Ramsey are trained to apprehend the bad guys. Ramsey currently is our SWAT dog also, and, and so we've gone into a lot of situations where there's the potential for danger is high. Deputy Ricks trusts Ramsey with his life. We train and test them all the time, but then you trust them fully on the street. Marcus Lamb, ETV News. Sergeant Murray and his fellow canine handlers train their dogs together every week. Joining us at the desk, we've got Marcus Lamb from Weather. Marcus, that looked like a ton of fun going and training with the dogs. How was it? Oh, it was a lot of fun. Like you said, the dogs were super nice. They loved their owners, and the owners, of course, loved them. And, you know, I tried getting that whole dog attack experience, like what you saw in my story. I tried to get the convince them to let me have the arm cast on, but they just kept trying to convince me not to. They said it hurt like a son of a gun. So after I saw it in action, I just thought, yeah, that isn't for me. But it was a lot of fun, all things considered. You know, it wouldn't be for me either, but I sure think it would be fun to own a guard dog. Yeah. And coming up. It's kind of an oasis in the desert along the Pacific Flyway. We'll show you where that oasis is and who's using it. In my mind, it was either BYU or dropout. We'll show you how serving a mission impacts women's college education. This bird is trying to get as much food as it can while it's sunny. On weather, I'll show you when to break out the raincoats. The current temperature is 44 degrees. Welcome to ATV Weather, I'm Marcus Lamb. I hope you guys are enjoying the sunshine like I am because that's just a taste of what spring has in store. But you know, weather is a trickster, so we gotta stay prepared. Let's take a look at the national radar. Now over here in the eastern section, right over here in New York, they're getting a lot of activity over there. A lot of rain and a lot of snow. These green parts mean that there's snow happening in the area and that's the highest concentration there is. I mean, New York has face worse. They're tough as nails. They know how to handle things. And right over here to the west, over here in California, they're getting a massive storm right here. San Diego is racing the front of it with a whole bunch of rain and Los Angeles on the edge of it. And moving upward to the north, and as you can see from our state radar, let's go ahead and take a look at that. There's not that much happening in northern Utah right here behind me. There's no clouds or anything like that or any rain activity. But over here, the storm is barely on front. And St. George is getting a little taste of what that storm has to offer on the western side. So I hate to say it, but it is coming for us, folks. And now how about we move on to my favorite part, seven-day forecast. Now, on Tuesday right over here, we got a 96% chance of rain. I know I said that we have a lot of sunshine right now, which is true, and things are great. But tonight, it's going to get a little colder. Should be sure to stay inside. The storm's going to continue on until Wednesday with a 76% chance with a high of 40 and a low of 40. And on Thursday and Friday, there is a bit more clouds heading our way. But we got a little bit of sunshine, so that should make things a little bit more positive for the depressing weather. But yeah, but on Friday, you guys are all clear for St. Patrick's Day, though, with a high of 36 to 14. So be sure to drink responsibly until then. Now on Saturday, we have a bit, bit more snow coming our way with a high of 37 and 19. And right over here on Sunday, we got a 24% chance of rain, but we do get some, a little bit of sunshine in our clouds. And on Monday, we have a 40% chance of rain and snow with a high of 39 and a low of 28. So there you go. That's all we got on weather. 
Back to you at the desk, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Marcus. You can expect to see more birds up in the sky for the next month. Anna Johnson tells you why they're here and why they're stopping. What we're looking at here is Farmington Bay Waterfall Management Area. There's about 350,000 acres of wetlands along the lake and about 60% of those are managed for birds. 12 million birds, over 300 different species, stop here every year. About this time of year is when you're going to start seeing the bulk of that. We have our great blue herons that are here now. We have lots of species of ducks and geese. Um, the swans, and then just a lot of other species of songbirds and whatnot. It's kind of like a gas station on a road trip for birds. From here at the visitor center, you can get a pretty good idea of the environment that these birds live in. But if you want to see any up close, you'll have to take a closer look. I think it's important for people to come out. Maybe they can learn about the birds to connect them to the wetlands of Great Salt Lake. Kajowski says Great Salt Lake's wetlands are critical for birds migrating along the Pacific Flyway. And they come here and they fuel up. Some of them will stay for a month, some of them maybe a couple months, and then they make their way on the rest of their migration. So Great Salt Lake is an essential place for them to come and eat invertebrates and rest. Kajowski says keeping water in Great Salt Lake is essential for wetland habitats. Pace says she's optimistic about the lake. I think that the future of the Great Salt Lake is kind of promising at this point for the amount of attention it's getting and we can you know, only hope for the best. But uh, I do think we should take it seriously and, and always do our part to conserve water. Educating people on the importance of these wetlands, Pace says, will help protect these winged wanderers. Anna Johnson, ATV News. The Division of Wildlife Resources hosts events where you can learn about Utah's wildlife. You can find a link to their website on our Facebook page. A recent BYU study shows that women are 10% less likely to graduate if they serve a mission for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I spoke with former missionaries at USU to learn how serving missions affected their college education. Women on campus may or may not have taken a gap year, time where they left school for experience-based learning, like serving a church mission. Researchers say while they may come back to school, they don't always graduate. This is a big puzzle that we still haven't been able to solve. We're not while the study focused on women at BYU, they say the trends they found apply to women across the state. Women are just as likely or more likely at other institutions outside of BYU uh, within Utah to take gap time. Marchant and Weichel say the amount of time it takes to graduate is a drawback to serving a mission, increasing from four to six years from the time they start school to six to eight years. While men can start their church missions at 18, women must wait until they are 19. Meaning most women will go to college for a semester or two before leaving. Not only does this extend how long it takes to graduate, but it can also cause women to lose scholarships. I think that's definitely a big hurdle that people have to get over coming back to school is, you know, being able to finance going to school. I was still working 20 hours a week as I did full-time school, um, and that was a lot. When I returned home, I only had like one outstanding scholarship. The rest had kind of been canceled as I left. Losing scholarships stressed Marshall out. I remember a lot of anxiety coming home and like trying to jump right back into school, knowing like I did not know exactly how I was going to make ends meet. They say serving a mission was a challenge, but it was worth it. I wouldn't trade it for anything, even as uh, you know, difficult as it was and can be. I, my life was changed during that year and a half. But I think one of the biggest things is that it helped me to like step outside my comfort zone. Weichel and Martin say it's important for women to understand the benefits and drawbacks of taking a gap year before making a decision. We'll leave a link to the full study on our Facebook page. We've got Noah Giles joining us from Sports at the Desk. Now, Paige, do you know anybody that happened to serve a mission or take gap time during their education? You know, not off the top of my head, but I can definitely see the appeal of taking a gap year. It's really stressful being in school. Noah, do you know of any sports players that have taken a gap year? I mean, I don't think that them as student athletes, I don't think they ever take a break. Yes. I mean, we had spring break this past week, but we still had a ton of sports coverage, which we'll get to coming up. Because I have this hair type, the person on this bottle has my hair type, therefore I can trust this, okay? It took a season. <laughs> we'll show you how you can contribute towards the diversity of Utah while getting your hair done. Hey there, I'm Lance Bass, and this is Chip. 
For more than 100 years, American Humane has been on the front lines protecting animals in times of crisis. From Pearl Harbor to 9-11, the California wildfires and the coronavirus pandemic, American Humane Rescue has provided life-saving assistance for animals in virtually every major national disaster. If you're anything like me, your pets mean the world to you. And if disaster strikes, you want to keep them safe. To prepare for an oncoming disaster, ensure your pet has secure and up-to-date identification. And if you must evacuate, remember to take your disaster preparedness kit with you. To learn more about disaster planning and how to keep your best friends safe, please visit AmericanHumane.org. It's been a minute since you've heard from us at ATV Sports. I'm Noah Giles, and I'm here to get you caught up with your Aggies. The men's basketball team was in Las Vegas this week for the Mountain West Tournament and made it all the way to the championship game where they fell to San Diego State 62-57. to The Aggies had a season to remember this year, which included some individual awards. USU junior guard Stephen Ashworth was awarded first team All-Mountain West Conference. Grad transfer Dan Atkin was awarded sixth man of the year, the award for the best player off the bench. And junior guard Max Shulga was given an honorable mention. USU finished in the top 35 in scoring, top 25 in field goal percentage, and top 5 in three-point percentage, and top 10 in assists per game. The men's team was also selected to play in the NCAA tournament this week. They are a 10 seed and will play Missouri on Thursday. The men's tennis team had three matches this week, winning one and losing two. The women's tennis team had a match against UC San Diego but fell 5-2. The softball team lost all four of their games this past week, but freshman Grace Matej had a solid week with a batting average of over 400 in those four games. So, I mean, it was a crazy week, right? We had that break, but I know the athletes, they don't ever stop. They're always on that grind. Well, and I'm super excited for softball. They're coming up this weekend with their first home series, and I'm going to be on the call for it. I'm really excited to see some of them play, as well as, you know, I'm excited for how the men's basketball team is going to do in the tournament. You know, I'm always excited for the softball season to start because I love the hairstyles that the girls do. They come up with creative braids and all of that. But a young black salon owner is hoping to contribute <laughs> to, towards the diversity in the hair industry. Zara Nasir joins us live from the Ag Science Building. How are you doing out there? Good. You know, I actually can braid hair, but it's not exactly my strongest suit. So instead, I visited a salon that's all about that and diversity. Blow drying the hair helps stretch out the curls before the braiding process. This client says she is a regular here because managing her hair gives her a hard time. I just like protective hairstyles. I hate having to do my hair. I think it's hard to deal with a lot of the time. So I like protective hairstyles and that's why I keep on coming back. Well, she'll help me like do the ends of the box braids like the While still learning, her 14-year-old sister helps with clients sometimes. Christina says she started the salon to provide relatable hair services to people like herself. You go to Atlanta, you see so many black people. You come to Utah, you only see a few black people walking down the street or walking to their car. You know, they don't have a lot of salons out here meant for colored skin people like us, you know, like you go to these white people salon and they got products for their hair, not for our hair. You might look at both of these hair products and think both are for hair, but some say the labeling, picture portrayed, and even the creator of the brand influences whether or not they buy certain hair products. The person on this bottle has my hair type, therefore I can trust this, okay? Like, I know, like if Lizzo came out with a hair brand or something like that, or like a hairline product or something, I would get it. Because I've seen Lizzo's natural hair. I'm going to go grab that. Your brother's still coming to get his hair done? Yeah. Christina says she has been doing hair since she was eight years old and hopes people can understand that. Hair is more than just hair. You know, it's a cultural thing, especially coming from us black people. We got different styles from 19th century, you know. And we just want people to respect that. As long as they can respect that, then we're good. Christina says she's proud of her progress and loves being able to do what she's passionate about while 
contributing to diversity. Reporting to you live from the Arc Science Building, Zahra Nasir, ATV News. Thanks, Zahra. How does cowboy culture survive in Cache Valley? These cowboys say they are doing everything they can to pass it on. Work, work, work without something to be Kristen Harris and performers like her at this year's Cash Valley Cowboy Rendezvous are keeping their music alive offstage in the education system. They present in schools, they do creative writing, they talk about guitar, they do songwriting, they have uh, uh, some kind of life coaching experiences too that they, they deal with. Kids like this little gunslinger got to learn about the cowboy life through music and performances. Families gathered for the 13th year of this celebration of cowboy culture. Thanks for joining us on this edition of ATV News. You can watch this and other editions on our Facebook page. We'll leave with some more footage at the Cowboy Rendezvous. Have a great week, Cash Valley. When he just came to the mountains, his life was far away on the road, hanging by a song. But the strings all I'm Marcel Spears. Keeping our global neighborhood safe is a tough job, one made just a bit safer with the help of America's brave military dogs. These dogs, who often take the same risks and make the same sacrifices as our human warriors, keep our troops safe by sniffing out bombs and IEDs, locating enemy positions, and bringing a sense of comfort and home to an almost unimaginable circumstance. Yet, when these brave canine heroes retire, they're not always given the same treatment as our military VIPs and are too often left overseas. American Humane works to bring home these valiant dogs and reunite them with the people who mean the most to them, their handlers, so they can enjoy happy, healthy, well-deserved retirements. To learn how you can help America's four-footed heroes, visit AmericanHumane.org. I'm yeah. not my first time bartending, so. It's a sausage party in here. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> I'm very familiar. Yeah, because you're a sexy girl, Sam. Last thing, totally last thing. Yeah. Is that the music, when Momo kicks it into high gear, is going to get a little bit loud in here. Mm -hmm. So your customers are going to have a hard time hearing you. So you may want to. What? Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. The Surplus Store. Someone's trash is about to be my treasure. We have cords and cables here. We have bags full of towels and sheets. Do you want this fold-up mattress? Because we don't. We got keyboards, paint cans, whatever this is, typewriters, computer monitors. It's destiny on the line. We want you at Surplus. Products are not guaranteed to work. All sales are final. This commercial is not endorsed by Utah State. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. 
They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me.